just having a default route that is pointing toward the ISP will be more than enough. Because actually we have only one path to reach any destination in the world. Um, in dual multi or actually dual homed uh, implementation, I don't think that we are gonna need, um, you know, um, to use BGP as well. It could be um, actually used, but I don't think that it's gonna make a huge difference. But I guess uh, starting from single multi homed implementation it would be better to use BGP to exchange routing updates between the customer and uh, the service providers because actually we are talking about connecting to multiple service providers and in such case uh, this should be leading to um, well optimal routing okay but be aware of sending um, any received um, prefixes from one ISP to another because actually if we are talking about receiving routing updates from ISP one okay and sending the same prefixes over to ISP two this means that you a customer will be a transit so um, you actually <laughs> paying money to the ISP and you are carrying traffic from the ISPs to other ISPs so you are a transit uh, autonomous system or transit network which should not be done you need to be very very careful about not being a transit between different autonomous systems or different ISPs so you need to filter updates okay and not send them over to other ISPs otherwise uh, they will learn uh, networks through you and you will be paying them to use your connections so this is a very tricky thing so you need to be aware of how to uh, implement BGP filtering uh, in such implementation and of course it will be better and better if you are to use BGP to exchange routing updates in dual multi homed uh, environment of course using um, BGP comes with how many updates or what actually is the amount of updates we're gonna receive um, question this is a very important question because actually you could be using uh, BGP between uh, the customer and the ISP and only receive uh, default routes okay on the other hand you could be receiving the full routing table updates for example you could be receiving the 200,000 plus okay um, routing table from ISP one and from ISP two as well okay um, well receiving the full routing table or the full BGP table from the ISP um, is good but again it comes with a cost because actually you need routers that can handle such amount of information so you need routers that have sufficient amount of memory CPU horsepower to handle all these updates processing to work with these loads but you will be reaching each and every destination using the best path so uh, let's give an example to um, what happens if we have multiple ISPs just like or autonomous systems okay just like this and this is uh, autonomous system three four five etc etc like this is 11 okay and this is autonomous system number 10 and we have 
a network right here. Receiving the full routing table of the internet from your ISPs, ISP 1 and 2, will make you able to decide for yourself which path you will choose to reach any network. For example, uh, if this network has an IP address of 10 0 0 0 slash 8, okay, and of course you're gonna receive an update from ISP1 and an, another update from ISP2 specifying that uh, network 10 can be reached through them. So um, we agreed that most of the time BGP will prefer the path that has the least amount of autonomous systems being traversed. So I guess it's better for our customer to reach over to the 10 network through ISP1, just traversing one ISP and it will reach autonomous system three that has the network in it. So this will happen when you receive the full routing update, the full routing table of the internet. What happens if you only receive a default route? You will not really know to what to, to, to what router you send your traffic to, to what ISP you send your traffic to, because you do not know is it better to go through ISP1 or is it better to go through ISP2. So receiving full information will make you aware on how to reach other destinations in the world because actually if you just using a default route you might be going through the longest path through multiple autonomous systems to reach a destination that is directly connected or located in, a, in an autonomous system that is connected to ISP1 okay so we are talking about optimal routing which is simply reaching to Destination, destinations using the best path and we are talking about sub uh, optimal routing okay so if you are to have the full routing table of the internet definitely you will be doing optimal routing but if you are just using default routes you're probably gonna have suboptimal routing in your network. A trade-off between the um, the two approaches we just talked about, you could be receiving some updates about some networks, some prefixes from one ISP. Okay, just like ISP1 sending own prefixes, prefixes owned by this autonomous system or this ISP, okay, along with a default route. And the same thing for ISP2. ISP2 will be sending um, updates about prefixes in the ISP2 network along with a default route. So uh, whenever you are trying to reach a prefix that is located inside ISP1 network, you will be just sending traffic over to ISP1 and vice versa or same thing for prefixes in ISP2 network. But what about prefixes and other autonomous systems behind ISP1 and 2? Again, we are talking about a possibility of having suboptimal routing to reach destinations in other autonomous systems because you do not have full um, information about all prefixes in the world. But this actually is better for um, horsepower or memory utilization, um, CPU utilization in, in our customer network. Okay, so what kind of BGP message is being exchanged? We agreed that first of all BGP establishes a TCP 
okay a session between two routers to be able to communicate with each others or use BGP um, between them and this happens um, using the open uh, message to maintain the neighborship BGP uses keep alive just like hello messages and OSPF and uh, EIGRP whenever BGP has something to say it will send an update that has prefix and attributes metrics if you will whenever it wants to signal an error it sends a notification message afterwards the um, peer relationship will be in reset um, you know will be restarted or torn down um, what kind of neighborship states you could be go going through um, idle simply means you have a problem if your router is stuck in idle state or even active state this means that you have a problem otherwise it should be going through connect which means that it is waiting for TCP connection uh, to um, to be completed and actually um, the router will not spend spend long time in, in this state the connect state should actually go through active and open sent open confirm then established which means that we have full adjacency between two neighbors okay so uh, connect then active um, active means that TCP connection completed but no messages uh, sent uh, open send means that we um, sent the open message open confirm means that both um, uh, open messages being sent and received established means that we agreed to be neighbors so um, parameters uh, match relationship works and everything is cool and dandy and we should be exchanging updates okay afterwards um, we said that if we stuck in active or idle state this means actually we have a problem for example um, you need to specify as we gonna um, say you need to specify the IP address of your BGP neighbor so what happens if you do not have a route to the IP address of the neighbor this means that your router will consider the neighborship as idle so if you do not have a route to reach over to the neighbor you'll find the neighborship in idle state and there is other thing as well I'm gonna talk about in a bit uh, which is the process is actually administratively down or the peer is administratively down being um, shut down okay but if you have a route to reach to the IP address of the neighbor and you try